Welcome, thanks for coming. Um, on this first evening in the Fab Lab, uh, I thought it would be a nice idea to have a regular meeting where we could share ideas and inventions and things like that. Basically to help yourself uh, so others can say something to your ideas, uh, but also to inspire other people. And how I would like to see these evenings is that the first block is uh, some kind of presentation, which I will do now. Uh, for some theory and for the understanding and then we can do some fun stuff and then in the end we can share uh, some thoughts or talk about thoughts. Um, on this first evening I want to do a little talk on, on invention and how does it work um, because I've been reading a lot about it the last years and years and none of the theories that I found I found were very getting yeah, explaining it. How, how does invention work? Uh, until I came onto this book, and that is what I would like to talk about. So, hello, my name is Bram Vries, and I think invention is good, so <coughs> let's have a lot of it. Um, I think that not everybody is an inventor, but I think a lot of people can be inventors, and it doesn't have to be something completely breakthrough invention, but it's, it's all these tiny little things that we as humanity as a whole can make uh, our world and our lives uh, a lot nicer. So why are we here? And where are we? We are in the Fab Lab in Berlin, and I think the Fab Lab is a very nice concept also to, to stimulate invention, as you will see later in my talk. And why do we have this meeting? Basically for the same reason. It's uh, ideas need other people. So how does it work, invention? Or what is an invention? I just um, wikipedia uh, it and an invention is something unique or novel, device, a method, composition or process. So it can be a thing or a way of doing it and it's all smartness. And to get very clear from the start, um, I forgot his name in English. It's uh, <laughs> Donald. Okay, it's <laughs> the friend of Donald Duck. Uh, I don't know his English name. Uh, this is all, uh, yeah, cartoon and what's his name in Dutch? Uh, Billy Wattle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's basically a guy, and inventions uh, fall from the sky. And invention is is actually hard work. It's it's Cairo or Kierlus. Kierlus. Yeah. Kierlus. I looked yeah. on uh, Duckypedia. <laughs> Duckypedia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's 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 actually it's a lot of work you you really have to stay focused. You put a lot of time to it and you really have to force yourself to not get frustrated. I think everyone uh, knows that. Um, it can be really frustrated. And what what is actually the reason why do people invent? This is an interesting question. And the, the common thought is, okay, if you need something, then you will invent it. Like, necessity is the mother of all inventions. And I think that's not true. It's actually not true at all. Um, for example, this guy, Jared Diamond, with his book Gun Guns, Germs and Steel, A Short History of Everybody for the Last 10,000 Years, um, dives into the question, okay, why are we, the, the Europe and the United States, why are we uh, much richer than the rest of the world? Is it because we are smart and they are stupid, or is something else going on? Um, of course something else is going on. And one of his uh, observations or theories is that uh, you need a lot of people, uh, because Europe uh, and the United States have basically emigrated out of Europe uh, has a very high uh, population density so it's a very good possibility to mix ideas among each other and so invention is accumulated invention one, one invention is always a com recombination of other ideas and other invention and so <coughs> they come to invention and another notion of him is that invention is, is not born out of necessity, but mainly because people just like to do it. A uh, famous example, for example, is the combustion engine. Uh, there was basically a tinker project uh, in a time where people were perfectly happy with uh, steam engines. And there was this rest product of the uh, pet uh, petroleum industry, which is uh, 
petrol, uh, which was way too explosive to do anything with it, and he thought, ah, maybe I can make a motor out of it, just for fun. And the rest is history, of course. But is it only fun? Is it only necessity? Is it a combination? I don't know. Other people say, uh, Kevin Kelly is his name, invention is inevitable. Uh, so, given the boat, given the steam engine, then at some point in time the steamboat just must happen, for example. But I also don't think that it is the theory that explains it all, because yeah, some inventions are just ingenious. Uh, another theory is uh, by Liebe Beike, a Dutch pro uh, professor uh, with his theory of the social construction of technology um, that is much more focused on, on, on the users. So the users have uh, built basically the technology around it. And one of his examples from his book is the bicycle. Uh, first it was this bicycle when the bicycle movement kicked off and that was a real nice uh, bicycle, a real nice uh, fun tool for young men to, to show off in the park. But then later the, the, the old ladies also thought, hey, that's actually quite a nice way of, of getting from A to B without getting dirty feet. So they really pressed, okay, we want to have a safe bicycle. Uh, and uh, so that is the... the um, the influence of, of social groups, which is very important. But still, I don't think that's the only thing. Because invention is, is really uh, it's a creative act. You, uh, you need to be creative. And uh, what creativity is, is also uh, kind of difficult to explain or how you can organize it. But, for example, John Cleese has a very interesting lecture on creativity on YouTube. I can really recommend to watch it. And um, basically what he explains is, okay, you really, um, if, if you want to come up with a new idea, then you need to take some time for concentration without distraction of like, let's say one hour, then you really think of it and then you let it rest. And then at some point later in time, for example, when you're under the shower or you're taking a walk, then things start falling into place. Very interesting. Um, another theory, um, also what John Cleese says basically that um, uh, creating a new idea is, is kind of uncomfortable because you really go into an area where you've never been before because it's new and that is hard work and it's just inconvenient. Um, <coughs> that is also I also want to notice very quickly this uh, theory by uh, Mr. Taleb, it's the black swan theory. It's basically used for uh, economic predictions and that is about dividing knowledge. Um, you have the first order knowledge, the things that you know. That you, uh, okay, first the question, do you know it, yes or no? And then you have first order and second order knowledge. So, do you know that you know it? Uh, or don't you know that you know it? Um, if you divide this into four fields, then you have first first order knowledge, the things that you know that you know. For example, I know how to tie my laces or I know how to uh, cook spaghetti. Then there is the things that you know that you don't know. Uh, for example, I don't know any Chinese. Uh, and there is a lot of other things that I am aware of that I don't know that. Uh, but I, if I want to change that, then I can, can do something for, to it. Then it becomes a bit more vague, but also more interesting. And that is the things that, uh, um, that you don't know, that you know it. Uh, no, wait. <laughs> uh, you know it, but uh, you don't know that you know it. Uh, that is the, the quadrant of ideas, for example, beliefs. It's, um, you have the feeling that it's true, uh, for example, I, have to, I, I think open source is really good, but I cannot really prove it, but it's my belief, and um, so I know it, but I cannot prove it. And then becomes the, the last one of the things that you don't know that you don't know them. That's the complete field of completely unexpected things. For example, 9-11 uh, was completely unexpected, 
despite conspiracy theories maybe, uh, and also the coming of, um, of internet. No one could have ever predicted that. And that is, um, I don't want to stay too long in this, but it's, uh, it's if you make an invention, you, you're working mainly in this field. It's, um, you really don't know. It's, uh, you, it's, it's inconvenient. You, it's an it's un, un, unknown country. Um, so, what is an invention? It's so. To conclude, it is a creative process. Uh, you need some knowledge for it. You, you have your associations, you have your experience, uh, and things like that. And it, um, it needs time. It's, you need to do experiments, and you have to be careful with it, and you uh, must get through, um, through frustrations and things like that. But the basis of an invention is always an idea. So, the matter of invention is an idea, in my opinion. So, what is an idea? Um, an idea, strictly defined, is just a set of connections in your head. That's it. And your brain, everyone's brain, most people's brains, have a whole lot of connections. Um, to get to numbers, estimates, of course, you have about 100 billion neurons in your head that can make connections with other neurons. Which means that in your brain, hi, Hello. welcome, in your brain you have about 100 trillion connections of, uh, and they all build up different ideas, they also build up your memory of, of how to uh, tie your shoelaces, they also build a memory how the, the apple pie of your grandmother tastes and but also they can be recombined. Just to get an idea of the size is to have about 1000 times more connections in your head than the whole bloody internet. So it's quite interesting what we walk around with in our skull. Um, and where do ideas come from? How, how do ideas work? Um, and that is the big question, and uh, I wanted to know it, and then I stumbled upon this book, and I really can recommend everyone to read it, because it's one, very entertaining, and two, it is, uh, it's fantastic. I second the recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to uh, give a short summary on, on, on the book, and where good ideas come from, uh, there's, there's basically seven, um, seven fields where good ideas come from. It's the adjacent possibility, it's liquid networks, the slow hunch, serendipity, error, acceptation, and platforms. So, to work them through one by one. Um, to start with, the adjacent possibility. Uh, it's the, um, the truth that an invention never stands on itself. They always come from from different parts and they also need uh, other inventions around them. For example, the light bulb could not have came, come into existence with, uh, without electricity distribution. So that's also why Edison basically invented both at the same time. He worked on the two things together. <coughs> what is a light bulb without electricity? Um, Another example is, is the incubator. Uh, there was this uh, doctor from Paris and he noticed that a lot of uh, children died very young, uh, when they, just after they were born. And he had, had a friend who worked at the zoo and there they had this uh, box to keep the, the little uh, chicken. What's a little chicken? Chicks. Chicks. To keep the little chicks warm just after they came out of the egg and that uh, inspired him to, to try also something uh, for, for children and um, it worked. Um, this is also the field where it's quite logical that the parallel invention just happens. It's, um, you, if, if, if you have the internet and you have a video player then it's, it's logical that things like YouTube happen and things like that. Um, other examples of parallel invention is, uh, is the telephone. I thought that Graham Bell was just a few hours earlier at the patent office as the other guy that nobody knows. <laughs> and, uh, but some inventions also really need um, other inventions around it. Uh, for example, 
Mr. Babbage uh, <coughs> from France, um, invented the analytical machine, what was basically the first computer. And he really had all these concepts of, uh, of, of uh, random accessible memory, a CPU, and things like that. Um, but it was in 1871, so no one was waiting for it, and there was also no, nothing like computer programming or, or a need for it. And it was also a very difficult machine to build. He did not finish it in, in his life, he only built some parts of it. So that is uh, also an example <coughs> that if you're way ahead of your time, then your invention also doesn't work because it has no, it's not in this, it doesn't have the adjacent possibility. Okay. The other thing, liquid networks. Um, uh, ideas have to flow, they have to spill over, and they, uh, they have to mix and to be remixed, and uh, people telling about it, and other people hearing it, and reacting on it, and things like that. Um, so, for example, FabLab could be a very good place where people just come together, they work on their own projects, and people are just curious what other people are doing, and they say, hey, uh, huh? and oh, wait, maybe you can do it like this. And that is also with good ideas, they somehow, the real good ideas, they are so good, they actually they cannot be kept secret. It's at some point they, they spill over and <coughs> people directly understand it and they start to lead their own lives. So that is liquid networks. Um, the slow hunch. Um, the myth of the, the great genius geniuses of history is that at some point they suddenly knew it. There was this light bulb going on and then they knew it. Um, in fact, uh, this is not always true. Uh, most of the time it's not true. For, um, and one good example of that is, is Darwin with his idea of natural selection. Um, in his own biography he writes that he suddenly had this idea of natural selection and then <coughs> suddenly he knew it. But the other good thing about Darwin is that he really wrote down all his thoughts and he had books and books and books of thoughts so you can really track back what he was thinking when. And um, I did not read it, but in the book it says <laughs> that um, already 20 years before he came out with the actual idea of natural selection, he basically already had all this pieces of puzzle together. So he, al he already knew it, he just didn't see it. And so you build up this, uh, these ideas and then yes, okay, at some point then there is this flash of light and then you suddenly understand it. Um, but it, it takes time. Uh, what also helps, like uh, John Cleese said for example, is that you, uh, that you have to let it rest for a while. And uh, many great thinkers, they actually had special lanes in their garden to, to go out for a couple of rounds to walk and then ideas fell in place and take a walk or just do something else and then there is a good chance that it suddenly happens. Uh, so there was the slow hunch. So let, let it grow. And uh, I think many people have slow hunches, like these, these vague ideas that you think, oh, I'm never going to build it, or hmm, that might be interesting one day, but you have no clue uh, how, or you don't have time to actually make it. Uh, that could also be a very nice topic uh, for this type of evenings to, to talk about your, your vague dreams, and then maybe it inspires someone. Um, the fourth, I think, is called serendipity, which is quite a difficult word for saying to discover something while you were looking for something completely different. And that is also uh, how your mind works. It's, uh, your brain uh, is, is in, in a frequency uh, where, the, where the neurons are stable, so then it's, it's what you know that you know, so you know how to fix your bike or whatever and then multiple times per second just for a very short time uh, your brain is in complete chaos so then the neurons can make new connections um, uh, with creative people 
these uh, these moments of total chaos are longer than with not creative people. So also cha uh, creative people can be a bit chaotic and uh, and also this chaos chaotic state of mind which is just a couple of milliseconds and then you're stable again and so it's it's this frequency imbalance and th this chaos state of mind is, is a bit like the dream state so also in your dreams you make uh, funny connections and then really strange things happen in your dreams as you know um, and that is um, well, I think everyone has heard about uh, penicillin. Pen, pen, that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah, penicillin. Uh, because the guy was looking for something completely different, and then he suddenly saw that the bacteria didn't grow on on that basically mistake uh, that he made. Uh, another example is, is LSD. Uh, it was thought of uh, as a treatment for uh, schizophrenia and also for. Um, a truth uh, serum, and then they, and then they figured out, hey, you get really funny. <laughs> I start to see funny things, and also X-rays uh, was also meant for something else. And then they discovered, hey, I can see my bones in my hand. That's pretty cool. It's, I can see if I have bone fracture or not. So there's many examples also for that, and that is um, a state where things can just happen. Uh, but also you should have the knowledge, of course, to, to recognize what, what is going on. So it's not only accident. Uh, similar to it is plain error. It's, uh, for example, the, the tube valve. Uh, it's also an inventor who was really working hard to, to try to read uh, uh, radio frequencies from the sky and then he slowly built up uh, basically what is the tube valve to, to amplify electric signals. And from the beginning to the end, all his uh, presumptions were, were just wrong. <laughs> he, he invented something, but he really didn't understand uh, what he was actually inventing. Um, which is okay, because uh, he didn't get poor from it. Um, and also, for example, the pacemaker is, uh, is also uh, made by... Uh, he was building some circuitry and then he took some wrong uh, electrical components and then suddenly he saw on his, uh, on his oscill oscilloscope uh, basically the rhythm of a heartbeat and he thought, oh, that's interesting, but it came from error, so don't mind if things go wrong. The, I think it's the sixth, yeah, it's the sixth already. Um, is acceptation, so that the invention is actually more useful for something else is that you actually wanted it to be for. Uh, an interesting example from nature is, uh, is wings, as birth, birds need uh, feathers to fly, but the actual function for feathers, uh, biologists say, is uh, to keep the bird warm. Uh, but they grew in such a way that they were also very good uh, air displacers, so at some point a nice warm bird fell from a tree and discovered that it could actually fly if it flapped its wing or something. Um, in art you see it also a lot of the, for example, the resampling of, of radio samples and making something new out of, uh, uh -huh, out of uh, old things and also, yeah, remixing stuff. The, the tra first transatlantic uh, flight uh, with the spirit of St. Louis, I think it was the airplane. Um, there was a prize by the US government, actually the first who makes it with a plane and a non-stop flight from, from the US to, to Ireland uh, gets quite a bit of money. And many people died, of course, and then there was this guy who didn't. Uh, so it can be really uh, an incentive to, to really push it through. So that is the, let's, let's show the list again. So that is, that is um, all the areas, and of course there are many are, are related to, to each other, um, that, that makes um, a good breeding ground for, um, for ideas and inventions. And I think many of these uh, can happen very well uh, in a fat lab and, and other places. <coughs> um, Another thing, basically a conclusion, uh, 
now we understand that ideas need each other and that uh, the money is not always the, the driving factor <coughs> to, to actually go to an invention. Here is a, an overview of inv uh, important inventions from uh, 1800 till now, divided also into four uh, quadrants, uh, like here people doing it alone, here people doing it together, uh, and here is um, the upper part is uh, for markets, so really the, the idea to make money out of it, and it is for whatever, it's just getting interested and then, and then doing it. Um, so, not saying that money is not a driving factor, because it is, uh, also for individuals and also for uh, people working more together, but uh, interestingly is that money does not always have to be the biggest driving factor. And uh, if you see if where money is not the reason and uh, people work together, then you have the most of the inventions. That's what I wanted to show you. So to keep it short, good ideas need time, they need a network, they need a bit of chaos, and it's a lot of fishing to get your great idea. So that was it.